Okay, today is uh, November the 15th, 2017, and uh, we're looking at the uh, southwest infrared map. We see that the tropical flow pattern continues to move right into Southern California, uh, yet there's no rain. Now, also notice what's happening right about where the pen tip is right here. Watch what happens when the moisture enters this area. It just disappears. That's because there is a transmitter maintaining a channel right through this area. Let's look at the other maps here. We have the western U.S. water vapor map, this channel right here, area of high pressure, which is uh, separating uh, this gale force. This is a former gale force weather system, which has been completely squashed by a transmitter. We can see the outline of this uh, low pressure system, which is surrounded by high pressure descending air. And we see that there is very little rotation left in that system. Now, during the time that this has been worked on last two days, uh, this large gale force system up here has been parked in place. There's a lot of moisture wrapping around that low pressure, which is winding right into uh, Washington, Oregon, and uh, some of this is generating a lot of rain in, in Northern California. The remnants of this system, which has been squashed, is uh, running right into Northern California. We'll take a look at the Doppler map here. Shortly, we can see the channel of high pressure that's been built in between uh, Southern California and uh, Northern California. Here is the water vapor map for uh, Southern California, Southwest map. We can see the that channel has been built in. Now, if we go back to the infrared map, we can see what's happening as the moisture moves into this zone. This uh, area, this zone, this blockade of high pressure separating this southerly tropical flow from the uh, northern, the northerly uh, flow pattern uh, right here. Let's look at the Doppler map here real quick. We can see that uh, over here on the west coast we have a zero rain in Southern California for the fifth day. We've been sprayed very heavily today. Uh, we had uh, uh, trails all over the place again, and that uh, prevented the rain. It causes the inversion layer. <clears throat> now, uh, in the uh, LA Times today, there was an article uh, linked, an LA Times article linked through the uh, Drudge Report. Okay, now that was dealing with the severe air pollution that is uh, getting worse over the last couple of years. And in that article, they mention uh, uh, the reason for that is the inversion layer, which is trapping pollutants and causing severe air pollution. But the article doesn't tell us uh, how the inversion layer gets there. And so that's an important uh, aspect of the story of the news that is not being reported by the uh, mainstream media. And that's why they've earned the name fake news is because we never get the truth from these people. Okay, so we've got no rain in Southern California. We've got plenty of rain up in the Northern California, but we see the uh, Nexrad microwave Doppler radars are at work. And we can see the rain patterns all chopped up around the state. And uh, those Nexrad microwave Dopplers uh, all have call signs. I wanted to mention that for all the new subscribers. There's a network of Nexrad uh, <clears throat> WSR-88D uh, radars. These are uh, transmitters as well. They uh, are marketed as severe weather detection radars, which they do. Do that job very well. But they also have a dual function, and that is to broadcast a microwave at high power levels, and that is what is uh, chopping up and evaporating the uh, moisture precipitation in the areas uh, surrounding these transmitters. We can see the effect here. We have a nearly straight edge right along there. <clears throat> Let's go up and take a look at uh, uh, Portland, Oregon. Actually, that's right down here. You 
can see that the uh, transmitter here chopping up the uh, area of precipitation. Let's go further north up here near, near uh, Spokane. This is where we can really see a good example. Just north of Spokane, there's a transmitter uh, with a call sign of uh, uh, KOTX. Now, all of these uh, transmitters around the country have call signs, and that's because they broadcast a lot of power. So the FCC has rules and regulations about transmitters. It doesn't matter what frequency you're on, but if they, uh, they're putting out a certain power level, you've got to have a call sign, and that's what we're seeing here. Uh, this KOTX transmitter is uh, chopping up the snow and the uh, precipitation. Now, these transmitters are not uh, television transmitters. They're not radio transmitters, but they are RF transmitters, and they work in the microwave band. And uh, they are capable of and are designed to chop up and uh, break up precipitation patterns. And so these, uh, <clears throat> the function, this is a function that the public doesn't know about. If we take a look at the picture here. This is a picture of the one of the uh, Nexrad microwave Dopplers. They're typically positioned on the top of a six-story tower. And the radome is up at the top, and that houses the uh, <clears throat> the uh, dish transmitter. Some of these also have flat panel, a phased array type, which are uh, newer. But uh, at any rate, these are what are causing uh, this chopped up pattern in the uh, in the rain in the precipitation. <clears throat> okay, so uh, the public doesn't know about this. They only know that the Doppler radars detect severe weather. That's what they are marketed to do and that's what they do but they also do a second function as i say that the, the public does not they're not the public is not aware of that because they're not told the noaa and the department of defense they don't uh, discuss those things so uh, we have manipulation occurring at the ground level and we also have manipulation occurring from space and that is what is causing this uh, square right on top of that huge low pressure system in the uh, West Pacific. This is a storm, and we can see that there is a, a clear rectangle on top of that uh, vortex and that is separating the center, which is the lowest pressure area, that is separating that from the the, uh, the moisture, the, the frontal system that is trying to wrap around that uh, developing storm can see the clockwise rotation right here. That is a result of this transmitter working on that center. And a lot of that moisture is peeling off and moving away. And that's by design. And uh, we can see that uh, <clears throat> we've got uh, tropical flow right into Southern California and Northern California. But only Northern California is getting the, uh, the rain. If you look at the MODIS Today map for Southern California, we can see that there's quite a blanket of chemtrails right through here. We've got an area that's not been uh, sprayed over right here, moving into San Diego. So if anybody living in that area uh, got any kind of rain, uh, let us know. Put a put a, a post up on the uh, channel. But the rest of this area here is completely uh, sprayed over. So we got zero rain up in the LA area. Just a lot of it's kind of a whiteout uh, this morning. Get kind of a whiteout situation. And that's because of all this chemtrail spraying. This off-white stuff is the chemical desiccant. This stuff is sprayed by the chem, uh, the uh, specially equipped jets. We can see the trails all through here. Okay, let's take a look at the Northern California map, which is uh, right here. We have Northern California. Now we do see some gray haze sprayed over all through here. But uh, as I've mentioned, the chemtrails are not as effective up in the northern latitudes. It is raining up in, in this area. Uh, right here near the Bay Area, we see uh, fairly uh, clean skies. That is the moisture. Uh, the, these natural clouds don't seem to be sprayed over. Uh, same right here. These, uh, this herringbone pattern of clouds, which is probably upper level uh, wind shear causing these uh, 
patterns here. As we scroll up, we can see a huge blanket, as I mentioned, crossing through Oregon and out into Idaho. Everybody up in Idaho is seeing a lot of chemtrails spraying. This gray stuff is the chemtrails. Now, as we climb north, we see that uh, Washington, there is some gray haze right over here on the uh, eastern side of the state and also up here but it's nowhere near as heavy as what we're seeing right here. And so there is rain uh, up in, uh, let's take a look at the Doppler once again for the Oregon, Washington area. And we can see that uh, the uh, eastern half of Oregon is not getting a lot of rain. Let's go back and take a look at that uh, map again. Here's Oregon. And sure enough, the eastern side of Oregon is not uh, getting too much rain. Washington up here, as I mentioned, there's a little bit of chemtrail spraying. We can see the, the gray haze, but nowhere near as heavy as down here. So if we go back to the Doppler map, uh, we see that there is uh, rain throughout the uh, eastern portion of Washington, as well as over here. But these uh, Nexrad microwave Dopplers are chopping up all that rain. We have the C Seattle uh, Tacoma transmitter. Uh, which is, um, uh, that would be uh, KATX. That's what's uh, chopping up this area of, of uh, precipitation right in here. And over here. Okay. So all of these transmitters, and there's, there's dozens of them, and they're located all around the country. They're run by the uh, DOD and also NOAA, and they coordinate with the weather controllers uh, and the satellites and that determines where uh, the spring, the chemtrail spring occurs and uh, they coordinate the ground transmitters, these NEXRAD transmitters that are uh, located all around the country. All right, so now <clears throat> getting back to the maps, uh, this pattern will continue through tomorrow. So we're going to continue to see more chemtrail spraying as this pattern continues. We do have high pressure in this area. We can see uh, looks like a low pressure system right here starting to uh, form right down here. And that has a transmitter on it. We can see the outline right here. It's a dry, dry upper level low. And we can see the bow in this uh, flow pattern as that transmitter uh, works to try to break this down. So this may pinch off, this transmitter activity right here, may pinch off and cut off the spigot right here. And so we may see a void moving up towards California, and this will be blockaded by the activity right here. Keep an eye on that. And also, as I mentioned, this has a rectangle on it. Everything here is blockaded. Notice the jet stream flow here is completely blockaded right here. That is separating everything. This vortex is completely blocked. Look at this. None of this weather is getting anywhere into this zone. That's not CO2. That is not CO2 causing that uh, blockade. And there's a transmitter right here as well. That is maintaining this, not allowing this to drop down. Okay, I think that's the end of the report. We'll just leave it uh, right here. And uh, we'll do another update uh, tomorrow. That's it.